All right, guys, it looks like we're going live now. We're going to learn all about products, products that we want to sell. So this is not product research uh, in, in the sense of finding what to sell, but learning all about the products that you're, you're selling or you've already determined to sell. I want to give people a little bit more time to come on <clears throat> before I actually get started, even though these are recorded. Um, so just a few more minutes. All right, how are you guys doing today? Uh, why don't you guys comment? I wanna make sure you guys can hear me. I'm trying to pull this up on my different devices so that uh, I make sure I don't keep on talking and, and, and nobody can hear what I'm saying. Can you guys just give me a yes or a one? Actually, I, could, I guess I could just open it up on my phone. Okay. Awesome. Looks like people are rolling in now. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. As I said a minute ago, we're gonna talk about uh, learning all about your products, products that you've already determined to sell. So again, these aren't products that you are, uh, this isn't all about product research and finding products to sell. This is after you've already determined your products to sell. Now, what, can you, what else can you know about them? How can you make your campaigns as good as they could possibly be? How could you highlight your products uh, in a way that nobody else is and get conversions that nobody else is? And so um, this does take a little bit of work and a little bit of time. We're gonna go through several different products and just kind of learn all about them. I haven't, I didn't pre, um, pre organize any of this. I have no clue what products we're gonna find um, simply because I just wanted it to, to be kind of like raw. I wanted it to be, um, you know, a discovery process just like it would be um, if I was doing this for myself, doing this for my own stores or for my own products. So, <clears throat> um, you know, like I said, this is not planned. We're gonna find, we're just gonna go find some products real quick. We're gonna assume that these are the products that we wanna sell. And then uh, once we, once we um, start getting some sales, or excuse me, I had to have to turn off my messenger. Once we, we're gonna assume that we're already getting some sales on these, on these products, we're not actually gonna do anything with it. Um, and we're just gonna look at what we would find about these products or what we could find about these products to, um, again, assuming that we're already selling it on our store, or we already wanna sell it, um, what can we do to enhance the, uh, the chances of people buying it, to enhance their interest, to enhance their, um, their perception of the product or, or the value of the product or, or whatever it is. We, we don't know. There's no way to know what we're going to know about a product until you actually know about the product. Sometimes you might, you know, if it's a niche that you're already in, if, if it's a, you know, say you're into hunting or you're into uh, bike riding or you're into to crocheting or whatever, if you're in that niche, you might know about the tools, you might know about the devices and, and the different um, products that people would buy in those niches. And so, um, you know, you would have a better chance of understanding that product and displaying that product to the customer because you already understand it. But for somebody like me, when I got into like my main store, National Parks Depot, I got into the outdoor sporting niche, I didn't know anything about any of that stuff. And so, uh, you know, I, I had to learn about it. I had to learn about why people wanted these certain products. What was this flashlight for? What is this, what is this water thing? What is, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it. And I wanted to find out why people were using the products, why they were buying it, how I could expand my audiences, how I could uh, put what I learned into the ad copy to, uh, you know, enhance their, their perception of the product and, um, you know, strengthen their, their desire to purchase it. And so uh, there's a few things that I do. There's a few places I go to research my products. And um, you know, so I'm going to show you guys that now. There's certain things that we learn typically about products. And so I'm going to actually type those out here and see if we could find, um, find these things in the products that we're going to look at today. And so 
The first one is price point. You know, we're gonna learn how to how to price a product based on the information that we find out about that product. Because again, we might not know anything about the product, we might not know anything about the niche at all, right? And, that, and now we're supposed to figure out how to sell a product to that niche at a certain, like I'm buying this thing for $19 off of AliExpress. How, you know, how do I know how, how much to price it for it? So we're gonna try to discover uh, price points. Uh, through this through this product research and then we're going to discover uses of products um, we're going to try to discover that um, th that's one of the things that I, I discover in in this product research is is uses there's times where I had no clue what a product was used for or that it was used in a, in a way um, you know for a specific task that you know just I never would have thought of you know maybe it was a um, well, I'll just take my backpacks, for example, because I've used that before. You know, when we started selling backpacks, you know, I had no clue that people that had janitorial jobs were putting their lunches in them and or people that were going to the gym would would put their gym clothes in them. I didn't I didn't know this until we started doing some product research. And then what that allowed us to do was actually market our products um, with, with that knowledge, now having that knowledge, that advanced knowledge. So. Um, you know, that's what this is about. We're going to learn about the different uses of our products, if we can. Maybe there's some, some uses that we don't know about. And then we're going to learn about some likes and dislikes about our products. Because, you know, some things not, not everybody likes. You know, sometimes they, they see your product, you know, you might be targeting 4 million people and, and uh, half of them might be in love with your product and the other half might absolutely hate your product and you, and you might not know why. Uh, going back to our, our, our backpack as an example, my, my backpacks, um, you know, our customers, the majority of our customers love them, but the people that hate them, they hate them. And the people that hate them are the ones that have the money to spend $200 on a backpack. Right. Whereas the ones that love them don't have the money to spend uh, two hundred dollars on a backpack. And so they love our affordable backpack that's you know, very comparable to the to the more expensive one. Um, the people that have the money, they know the difference. Uh, they're willing to pay more for, for you know, a slight difference in quality. Um, but the people that aren't that, that, lo that love the product, they, they are happy with it just as is. And so there's no way to really know. There's no way to know what the. Um, you know how people feel about a product ahead of time except by doing some product research otherwise you just have to wait till afterwards until after they're buying them from you that's you know how i discovered uh in the beginning what how people like my products and, and you're still going to do that as well um you're just going to look at reviews and feedback from your customers but before then there, there's a lot of other ways to do that and that's uh the, the product research that i'm gonna show you here in a little bit so you're gonna learn about the likes and the dislikes about your product what people like about them what people don't like about them um, you know, you could think, find out things like, um, you know, maybe the sizing is off. Maybe, maybe the sizing from the Ali, AliExpress vendor is off, and you're going to be able to find that out and know that ahead of time so that you could inform your customers, hey, make sure you order one size ahead or, or one size above or something like that or one size too small or whatever the case may be. And you'll be able to discover that um, f from, from product research. Okay, so um, I'll put that on likes and dislikes or, or pros and cons or it maybe is what I'll call that one. Uh, likes and dislikes or pros and cons and then um, targeting you can learn some targeting on this one right I was selling uh, some binoculars one time and um, I was going after wait maybe it wasn't binoculars no it was a it was a golf range finder it was a, it was a range finder I, I don't even know what it is I, I something with distance and knowing how to aim I don't know but some you guys in golf might know what it is I, I didn't do too much research on this one I, um, I I learned something about targeting on it I did do the research on it but what I learned was about targeting I was going after uh, low income people that were into golf but what I discovered um, from doing the research was that uh, people that like to golf with their kids who are parents that went golf with their kids sometimes um, were actually uh, more susceptible to of buying the product because it was really cheap. And so, you know, the, the people didn't want to buy it for themselves, but they would buy it for the kids because it was a great beginner product. And so you could learn that type of stuff, how to, how to you know, angle your targeting uh, of your product from, from this type of research. So um, let's see. The next one I have is, um, I guess we would call this restrictions restrictions and that has to do with like trademarks and um, maybe it's something that can't be shipped to certain locations or maybe there's some uh, illegal uses in certain locations that you want to be aware of these of these types of things um, there, you know not every product is going to have some sort of, some sort of restriction so um, you know 
we might not find we might not find you know some of these, but we definitely probably won't find restrictions on the products that we, we look at today. Um, but I do want to point that out because I want you to be aware is if there is some sort of restriction, if there's something that you need to know about your product to you know for your for uh, either legal reasons or for for safety reasons of of their customers or whatever, um, you do want to be made um, you do, you do want to be aware of those. So um, you know be on be on the lookout as you're doing product product research. Be on the lookout for any type of uh, dangers or, or anything like that. Um, we'll put that to restrictions and dangers. Okay, and so those are um, that's that's all that was on the top of my head uh, as I was kind of preparing this. Um, like I said, I didn't prepare any products or anything like that, so uh, maybe there's more that I just don't remember right now. Uh, but these are the ones that I want to start with that we could start looking for in in the beginning and. Um, see if we could add to this in any way. So I'm just trying to make a little divider here. Okay. So we'll see, we'll see what other stuff we could, we could add here. So but what I like is like a list, a list in the end of stuff that you guys could then take away and say, okay, these are the things that I'm looking for when I'm, when I'm doing this product research. Okay. Sound good, you guys? Can you guys give me something in the comments? I'm refreshing the, the video page right now, making sure you guys are all with me. Make sure nobody's sleeping yet. Looks like all is good. Can I increase my font size? Let's see. Um, you guys, hopefully, you guys could. You guys were able to see some of that. Um, increase my font size. There you go. Does that help a little bit, you guys? Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to. Um, Go ahead and kind of make some notes of things. Product, product one. I don't know how many products we're going to go through. Um, we'll just start and start finding stuff and, and see where we end up. Okay, so I'm going to open up AliExpress in another window and bring that over here now. If you guys get bored, if I if I bore you, just go type something in the comment like uh, I, I don't know something crazy. And um, or, or just tell me where you're from. Just start talking. That, that that usually wakes me up. Hopefully this doesn't bore you though. It's uh it's just monotonous. It's gonna be very very monotonous. And this is like this is the hard work that people don't like. And that's why I said bored because this is the stuff that's like, it, it's not the glamorous part of e-commerce. It's fun to me. To me it's fun. To me this is like research. Like research is always fun to me. I I enjoy it. Right. Uh, I like numbers and data and, and information and discovery. I, I, I love all of that. But a lot of people get bored with it. And you just, you know, you just want to throw something on your story, like the design part of it and start to get selling or whatever. Um, so, you know, this stuff does seem boring, but it's, it's very essential for, for high converting stores. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to pick a niche. Let's pick bags. Um, let's see, bags, coin purses and holders. Um, maybe too general. Let's pick a product that you guys see anything. If you guys see anything on my screen, um, I'll, I'll keep refreshing and, and uh, we'll come back to it and look at it. But let's take uh, maybe this Bluetooth player. I wonder if that's what that is, a Bluetooth uh, music player, Bluetooth speaker. Um, colorful, water waterproof, Bluetooth speaker, wireless, NFC, super bass, subwoofer. Okay. So that's a, a speaker. I mean, obviously, it's going to have an obvious an obvious use, right? People want to listen to music, right? It, it seems really, really obvious. And so I think that that makes this a good product to do our discovery on because I want to show that sometimes things aren't obvious, right? Sometimes, sometimes things, you know, will really pop out and and like blow you away at, at some of the uses or. Um, how people are using things, or who's using it, or, or whatever. You know, we don't. I don't know what we're gonna find with this. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it'll. We won't get anything. But um, it, it's. You know, you're gonna be surprised at what it is that people are using your products for. So what I always do is I'm. I'm starting off on AliExpress. That's basically where I'm finding a lot of my products. You know, I might use some of the other tools, but I almost always end up over on AliExpress um, because AliExpress just gives me a lot of good information. There's a lot of things that I can find here about a product. Um, in, in doing my product discovery. And so I'm gonna start writing, writing some of these down in the notes. But the f very first thing uh, that I'm looking at is I'm actually looking for, uh, after I've already discovered that it's selling, I'm looking for reviews. I wanna see, I wanna find a product that has a lot of reviews um, or a listing that has a lot of reviews. This is the product that we're already selling. 
right? And so um, we could find this product on several listings, find the same product or something very similar, right? Here's, here's the same one, here's the same one. I don't know if these ones are the same. Actually, I don't even know if this one is. But um, either way, they're close enough to where we could at least learn about that product. So we're gonna find one with a lot of reviews. This one has 300, this is 2,000. Um, let's just go ahead and open up a few of them and kind of just get an idea of what the reviews are saying. Now, the more reviews, the better uh, because it gives us more information. Have you guys looked at the reviews before? You guys say something in the comments if you guys have used, if, if you've looked at these reviews and you spent some time looking at the reviews, the feedback on AliExpress about the products that you're selling. Alejandro had a point. He says, uh, I'm bored and tired on my current job, right? So if this, if this monotonous work of research is, is boring to you, well, I hope you have a good day job, right? I hope you have a, a day job that keeps you happy and excited. So um, good point, good, good point, Alex, or Alejandro, Alejandro. Um, cool, you guys, you guys uh, some of you have done this, some of you haven't, awesome. Um, I, I love this, I absolutely love this, right? You could learn, out, learn so much information, um, but a lot of times the reviews are in like Russian, um, you know, Russian, Russian, whatever this is. Um, you know, you don't know what they're saying, so that, that's fine. But then you get English ones that you can read, right? So this is what it says. I receive, unless you know these languages. If you know those languages, then good for you. Um, otherwise, you got to look for something in English. You could also put uh, sort up here. Um, translate to English. Actually, uh, view United States only if you're in the United States and you only wanted to see United States reviews, um, but you can also translate up here. Um, it doesn't work, obviously. See, it doesn't work for some of these, um, but for some of them, it do. they do. So you get to see what they're saying, like this Russian one, it looks like it did. Uh, delivery for payment to deliver, delivery into the hands of four days, whatever that means. I think he got it, got it to him in four days. Um, yeah, I don't really know. That's too uh, mumbled for me. Let's, let's look at the English one. It says, I received this item and was a bit cautious of the quality at first as it was very affordable. Well, it arrived in two weeks and I'm very happy with the quality and sound. The seller even sent me a memory stick for holding music. The colors are beautiful and it's so easy to use and set it to beats of music on multiple settings. Sounds great. So uh, cool, they like it. This person got it, they were, they were skeptical of it. Now this person is from the United States, so they're gonna have higher standards than, than most, I, I would think, right? Yeah, some of you guys are saying you, Google, Google Translate, you could do that too, but um, like it's, it's, some of that's not effective. I just look for the easy stuff. So, um, you know, right here he says uh, that they liked it, he was skeptical, skeptical of the quality, and wasn't sure, you know, but they bought it anyways, and they loved it very good high quality sound so the cool thing there, there's things that you could know about this you could know that the person had a high standard right they questioned the quality in the first place they had a higher they had somewhat of a higher standard right they were questioning this is this is affordable this is cheap why, how, why is it so cheap right so he had a high standard in the beginning he got it he said the quality um, it has great quality and sound he's happy with the, the quality and sound gave it a five stars so if i'm questioning whether or not i should be able to sell this product i'm going to conclude if i keep finding reviews like this five star reviews that said i, I was cautious but it's awesome i'm going to sell the product i'm not going to have any questions selling the product right another thing i want to learn about this product this is our first review I, I didn't i didn't look at this ahead of time i didn't know anything about this, this is our first review that we're looking at the, the um one of the things i want to notice that we wouldn't have noticed before is uh the seller even sent me a memory stick for holding music I wouldn't have thought of that. If I was selling this, I wouldn't have thought of a memory stick. Maybe if I, I researched a little bit more and read the details, I would have learned that you know it holds a memory stick, but I, I didn't. I didn't, didn't watch the video. I didn't do any of that. I just jumped straight to the reviews, and they tell me, th this person right here told me that it takes a memory stick for her holding music. The seller is sending one. Now, we don't know if all sellers are gonna send one, but we wanna make sure, now that this person points it out, we wanna make sure that when we're selling them, we're gonna include a memory stick. Now, if you heard me talk before, we hear, hear me talking about uh, having a bunch of um, stacking value, increasing your, your customer's overall spend and, and really stacking value. Well, one way to do that is giving freebies. So buy this now, get a free memory, memory stick. No, actually give them two free memory sticks. Why? They cost like two bucks, right? Give them, give, them, give them two of them free, right? Then you're stacking the value. So I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that there is a, that, you know, it would take a memory stick and, um, 
now I could highlight that in my marketing. I could say free, free memory stick. Now I want to make sure that it's actually being included. However, um, you know, now I know that it can be included and I want to stack value. So that's what I'm gonna do. So memory stick included. So I want to, I want to make my notes so that I, I don't forget what it is I'm learning. Right. Um, I could even say things like affordable yet high quality. These are just my own notes so that, um, so I come back and, and uh, add this stuff to my product descriptions and my, and my ad copies later on. Um, 28 days to wherever this place is at. Column is basically normal, place clean, connect, NFC failed. This problem was having a problem with the NFC. People don't use NFC anyway. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to speak for other people. I don't know how often people use the NFC, the, as long as the Bluetooth connects. Uh, but you do want to be aware of problems. So so I'll write that one down. Because remember, we want to be, uh, this is restrictions, I guess, dangers, problems. I'm going to kind of categorize all those together. That's not likes and dislikes. That's going to be, you know, assuming that it's good quality, we just don't like that, you know, whatever, right? But like, I don't like, maybe the blue lights, uh, I'd rather have red lights or something like that, right? That has nothing to do with quality. This, the restrictions, dangers, and problems have to do with the quality. Um, so this person said NFC failed. Okay. Bought home five days, brought home five days, nice. So maybe got to, I, I think it's get, just getting to Russia really quickly. Uh, super calm, especially for the price, came with label, the winner. Oh, oh, I think what it's saying is it has branding on it. They're saying it has the, the, the winner branding on it. Okay, um, packed an original box, did not mash, plays well, volume is super, Bluetooth works, hooray. <laughs> okay, the radio signal, we bad. So it does have a radio on it. Oh, this one does. Wait. Radio signal. Oh, FM. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so radio radio signals not all that well, but that could be. So the catch is nothing happened. Um, yeah, the radio signal could be location. Maybe I'm not sure. The catch is nothing happened. I don't, I don't know what he means by that. It's probably the translation. Um, the auxiliary wheeling at high volume and also sound good. Fast delivery. I don't know. They liked it. Whatever. They liked it. Um, that's what I would do. I would just keep going down and learn all about it. Super sounds great. Gift USB flash drive. Everything works. Seller behind the NFC. Seller. Thanks, seller behind the NFC. I don't know. I don't understand what they mean by that. Um, but yeah, like we could learn all about products. Does that make sense to you guys? That, that was just one simple trick on one product real quick. Um, but we've learned... Let's see, let's pull this sheet back up. This is what we learned, just three things that we just didn't know ahead of time that, that you know, a, a memory stick can be included and, and will be included because people are liking it. It's making them happy. Um, it's affordable yet high quality. So even though, you know, it's got a low price, people are really liking the quality of it. It's up, it's up to par what, to something that, you know, people with high quality standards would like, I guess. Um, but there was a problem with NFC failing on some people. So we want to pay attention to that. We want to we want to um, make sure that, uh, this is an issue that's coming up or over and over and over again. So like there was some times in this translation, I understand what he was saying about the NFC. Um, that one we understood, but there was another one that we didn't understand. Stink seller behind the NFC. I don't know what that means. So, you know, if I keep seeing pro problems with the NFC, then I might want to um, consider a different Bluetooth speaker or something like that if I'm selling this one. I, I don't know. It just, re it just really did comes down to, um, you know, what, what is the problem and... and um, you know, how valuable that feature is to, to the customers and all that. Like NFC on a Bluetooth, I don't, I don't think anybody would use it. Like, I don't use it. I mean, you, you guys would know too. You know, have, have you ever used the NFC on, on your, uh, on say your phone, connect to a device? You almost always use Bluetooth. So um, that's just one example. If we were selling this product, you know, you just want to consider it. You want to weigh whether or not the, pro, the, 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 um, the problems, the issues are really issues, right? So for example, um, that is an issue that I may or may not stop selling my product for. Probably not at this point. Doesn't seem everybody seems to love it. Five stars. Everybody's happy. I'm not going to worry about the NFC. Versus something like the um, those hoverboards that were people were selling. 
Yes, you guys don't even know what an NFC is, right? So it's, that's not an issue. But versus something like those hoverboards that everybody was selling, and then they started catching on fire and became such a problem that the uh, that customs started letting stopped letting them through. You couldn't you couldn't import them anymore for a while. They wouldn't let them in and out of, of certain ports. And so um, you know that's a problem that I don't want to have. I don't want to have hoverboards blowing up, uh, catching on fire and on under kids' feet and stuff like that. So if that came up even once or twice, I'm like, no, I'm not selling that type of I'm not selling that particular product. Right. And um, it actually did. I actually created a hoverboard store way back in the days. And that's when that issue came up. And, and I just never did anything with it after that because of that. So, um, I mean, luckily, nothing caught on fire with mine. But you do want to be aware of those issues. If it's a bad issue, then then if it's a really dangerous issue or something like that, safety, you just consider a different product. Right. But if it's something that the NFC that don't even, you guys don't even know what it is. I don't know what it is. You know, th don't even worry about it. Right. So, um, let's see, basically pro ask the seller notice. Um, yeah, I don't know what that one is. Let's just find some English ones, some, some U S ones. Okay. That was the one we read. This plays well, Qu qualitative, qualitatively lacking only here. So it's possible to use this column as a, huh? Plays well, collected qualitatively, lacking only here, so it's possible to use the column as a power bank. Oh, okay, I think he, what he's saying is that he would like to be able to use it as a power bank, although the other similar speakers, there is a function. Okay, so yeah, that's what he's saying. He's saying he'd rather have one with a power bank. Good to know, right? I, I wouldn't have guessed that. He says that there's other ones out there that have a power bank. That just tells me that I don't have the best one. I want to have the best, right? So, you know, that just te that tells me that, that um, you know, mine's lacking. Others have a power bank bank right they recharge you could plug it plug it into your phone and charge your phone off of it right has a battery so um you know i wouldn't have known that was that the one where's the one that we're looking at this one okay we would have known that right did you guys see that should i take my samsung phone back smiles <laughs> why are you not using the are you using the uh, nfc that's funny so um I mean, you guys get that, right? You, you guys could see how, how crazy, insane, valuable that is, right? I mean, we just looked at one product. We just looked at a few reviews, just read the reviews and, and learned, um, you know, these things right here. I could go find, now, now that I'm, I'm selling something like this, watch this, what, watch what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna search colorful waterproof, waterproof Bluetooth speaker, wireless. Um, let's put, um, Power bank. Now this one is twenty-seven sixty, but let's look at how much a power bank one is. Oh well, they're not even gonna come up. Of course, it's make it, gonna make me look bad. Maybe if I search other terms, um, waterproof color. Let's see. That's cool. Whatever it is, it's a phone. Yeah. So there's like these ones that are waterproof. Um, let's see, twenty-nine dollars. It has a power bank on it. A little bit different. It's not um, as colorful. Here's a here's a colorful one. Does it have a power bank? Yep, this one does. But it's forty seven dollars. So maybe that could be not an upsell, but maybe that could be like a second option. Like you could buy the the smaller, cheaper one for uh, seventeen bucks or whatever it was, twenty bucks, and then the more expensive one for you know fifty bucks or whatever you want to sell them to your customer at. Actually, that's the prices on here. Right. So I could have I could now I discovered that I could have a higher end product. So I have the $27, the one that I'm buying for $27, maybe selling for $49 or $39 or whatever, um, $29 or whatever you want to do. Um, so, so you have that one and then you have the more expensive one that's, that has the, the power bank in it and you're going to sell that for like $69, right? I wouldn't have known that though. I wouldn't have known that had I not done that research, that simple research of just reading what the comments have to say. Right. I'm not talking about even looking at the product. We didn't even look at the product description. We didn't do anything, you know, the, the normal stuff that describes the products. We're looking at the reviews and kind of reading in between the lines, uh, learning things from, um, you know, what the, what the customers are saying. Right. And then, you know, what else you could do? You get a good look at what the product looks like with their pictures. Right. You could click this button right here. Um, I get rid of the United States and then I could click, um, Get rid of the translate. To, you know, I don't know. It seems like there should be more. Oh, no, this one's this one with only 170 reviews. Okay, so yeah, um, 32 pictures. There's 32 reviews with pictures. So now I get to see what the product looks like. 
Right. Get a good look at the product. Oh, that's that uh, stick. Look, that, that's the USB stick that they're including. Where'd that picture go? Come on, come back over here. Oh, here it is right here. Yeah. That's what they're including for free so they could listen to their music. Cool, huh? So, um, yeah, I like it. I like this stuff. I mean, just like you get a good idea of it, of what it, what it is, of that product. Um, for the rate, for this one, I mean, it's, you're not going to learn very much more about it from looking at those pictures. You might, but say you're looking at like a woman's dress. Well, now you can learn a lot about it. Now you could now instead of see, sitting on a white background, maybe we'll look at a woman's dress in a little bit. You'll see some, you'll see pictures of them actually wearing it, right? Uh, so you know, it makes a huge difference on on uh, you know the, the customer's photos. So let's look at let's look at another one. Let's look look at a few of these because really we just looked at one product, but we we actually want to look at several different aspects of that of that product or, or um, several different products, variants of that product, or, or, or several different listings of that product, right? So um, these were all a little bit different, but um, still this one has 1,200 reviews, or excuse me, 1,900 reviews. And um, let's see, let's look at them from the United States and with pictures. Excellent craftsmanship, speaker works great, nice price, packing was, was perfect. Nice to go to the beach and listen to beautiful mu music. Go to the beach. Now we just learned why they're using it. Why they're using it. Perfect for the beach. Why? Because it's waterproof. Right? I mean, that's obvious, but I didn't really think of that. Right? I, I didn't really think about that. Yeah, so somebody says you're under the impression that you're supposed to stay away from electronics and clothing from AliExpress. Um, you know, why, we're, we're, uh, we tell you guys that. So me and every, uh, probably Chris told you guys that in, in the 90 Day Challenge. Um, you're told to do that. Uh, the reason being is, is because there's other things that you want to be aware of, right? There's things like the sizing. There's, things, there's a lot of stuff that you want to be aware of. And for, for just getting started, sometimes it's not... Um, you know, it's not as easy to do this research. Now, that's the reason why I'm showing you this research. If you do this research, then you could sell clothing items and all, and and uh, electronics and stuff. So it's really about this research. This is this research allows you to sell uh, beyond basic stuff, right? It allows you to get get outside that box of what everybody else is doing. Uh, this research it does. It, I mean, it's clear. It, it really will allow you to do that. And so, um, you know, because you you could be confident of this product. You want to stay away from electronics because they could have a lot of problems. Right now, there's a, a lot of other things that you need to be aware of, like Bluetooth. I know for like if you're going to start importing this product, um, I, I'm going to tell you ahead of time you're going to need Bluetooth licensing. If you're going to start importing in, in on a boat and doing your own importing, if you're going to wholesale, you know, buy it from Alibaba and import it and get it into a, a facility here in the United States or something like that, you're going to need proper licensing for importing uh, Bluetooth devices. That's something that I've dealt with. I've lost thousands of dollars on, on product on the on the boat just because I couldn't claim them from from customs because of this. So I learned that the hard way. However, for drop shipping, we're just talking about drop shipping right now, just getting started and learning about your products. You could sell whatever you want all day long you, as long as you're paying attention to this, right? As long as you're, or excuse me, um, these things. Pay attention to these things. You want to pay attention to, uh, you know, any, any of this stuff. Learn learn about it, especially like the restrictions, dangers, and problems, um, especially restrictions, I guess, on, on this topic of what you can and can't sell. Just pay attention to restrictions. If you see something coming up over and over and over again, like all the U.S. sellers saying, Mine's, mine was seized by customs because it's not allowed in my state. Or some something like that. Whatever. If you see that, then leave it alone, right? But those are the things that you're not going to see up, see over and over and over. If you see these reviews, uh, you know it has 1,200 five star reviews versus uh, you know maybe 100 and what is that? 150 or so, uh, 140 or so other reviews, right? Other than five stars, so they got an insane amount of five star reviews. You know when you see that, you can be pretty confident of that of that product. Right. So again, if you're not comfortable with selling electronics or clothing, those are just the examples I was going to, I was just giving just because they're in my head. Don't, don't worry about it. Just sell what you have. Do, just do the same thing. Just do the same research, uh, no matter what the product is. Just keep in mind that, just keep in mind that, um, you know, what you, you just want to learn as much as you can for the, from the reviews. Now that's the point of, of doing, of doing what I'm showing you here is just, you want to learn as much as you can about your products. Okay. Somebody asked, would I use the pictures? that I find in the reviews, would I use them? Um, so since you asked, would I use them? I'm going to answer it different than if you would ask, would I recommend if you use them? Um, because 
you you know it, it, you can, you can't just take pictures off of websites and just use them any way that you want. With that said, I'm comfortable sometimes sometimes taking these review pictures and using them on my website uh, for several reasons. One, I might take this picture from Russia. I'm targeting the United States. This person from Russia will never ever ever see my photo, see, ever see it, but never see that photo review that picture, right? Because I'm just targeting the United States, it's it's not going to be an issue. Um, if I have, you know, when you start getting into like people and faces and, and personal stuff, then I'm a little bit more careful about that. Um, the vendors are not going to care. You can take all the information from the vendors. They will not care one bit. So um, or, let me rephrase that, though. That's not I'm not saying to do it. I'm just saying that this is from my experience and, and I have allowed myself to do some of these things some, sometimes. So um, what I recommend you to do is this. What I recommend you to do is if you're selling a product, get that product to yourself and just take a few pictures of it yourself, right? Because, you know, you're talking about review pictures, right? You don't need a special camera to take that picture, right? You don't need special, you don't need special equipment to do this, right? Now, to get started, you know, it could be tempting to do stuff like that, um, you know, that's your decision, um, but it's just as easy to just take your own pictures. It really, really is. So um, that is what I recommend that you do, so... Yeah, you guys can ask questions on uh, in the comments. I'm gonna try to answer them as we go along, just because I like to to uh, keep up with the concerns and make sure I don't leave anybody behind with what I'm saying. Um, does that mean that you cannot import a single item? No. When I said that you're gonna have problems with importing the Bluetooth stuff, I just mean when you're when you're buying at wholesale and you're like trying to go through customs. Um, customs only pays attention, uh, pays attention to, um, to, to certain value over certain value and it depends on the country that you're in. Um, so, you know, like if you're ordering a small box of, you know, 500 necklaces, you don't really have to worry about stuff like this. If you're ordering a container full of Bluetooth speakers, you have to worry about it. Okay. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. So not importing one by one, not drop shipping or anything like that. So yeah, so that's, you know, we can learn the same type of stuff from, from this, this set of reviews. There's 1,900 more here just to, like, you could go on for days just reading those um, and, and keep doing the same thing, right? Just go to the next one and, and read its reviews, whoops, and, and see if you learn anything else about this one, right, or from this one. Um, you, chances are you might not. And so then the next thing I do is, let me show you. I come over to Amazon. I'm opening it up in another tab. And um, just search for pro the product on Amazon. Let's see if I can get that in there. Okay. Um, to try to find the, the same product. Here it is. Some some reviews. Another one. Right? And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look for reviews on Amazon. <clears throat> so yeah, Kenneth, uh, I, I typically if I'm gonna put products on my site, I'm typically gonna run ads to it. I'm gonna you know, I might throw 10 products on my site and test all 10 of them and maybe one of them will be a hit or maybe none of them will be a hit and I'll turn off all my ads after a few days. Um, that's a whole nother video on how I do that. But yeah, I do test, um, you know, if I'm putting the product on my store, I'm typically going to test it with ads. And then uh, if it doesn't work, I'm still going to leave it on my store. Um, so, but with this product, we, you know, for products that we're going to be doing this amount of research on, we're not going to do this with every single product that we find for our store. This is only for products that we, we've decided that we're going to start, that, that, that's getting some sales and we decide we want to sell more, that we need to really focus in on. Okay. If we spent this amount of research on every single product that we put on our store, we, we just, it would take forever to be successful. So this is not what you want to do for every single product you put on your store. To get products on your store, just use like something like Oberlo and just, you know, get click happy, start clicking the little buttons and getting those products on your store and just, you know, changing descriptions real quick and, and just getting them up there quick so that you can test quick. You know, that's all, that's really what, what that part is about is just speed and testing, right? But once you get a product that, that gets some sales or gets some interaction, maybe some engagement, people are engaging with it, maybe they're not even buying it, they're just engaging it, engaging with it, your ads, um, you know, then you're going to want to do some more in-depth research to to um, you know this level of research to really uh, enhance your sales pages and your ad copy. 
So you could do the same thing on Amazon. The better thing on Amazon, though, is that you get questions and answers. And this is where I discovered before uh, about my about the rangefinder. So coincidental that that's what's down here is a, is a rangefinder. Um, you know, that's what I was saying about about a little while ago. That that's how I discovered that the one rangefinder was for kids. You know, the, they asked uh, they asked somebody asked, is this is this good for a kid or or I don't remember what the question was. And somebody said, yeah, I bought it for my kid or I bought it for myself and ended up giving it to my daughter or whatever the the review was. And so you can learn a lot of information from Amazon uh, about the reviews. Now here's something you guys might not know. If you find a product on AliExpress, 99.9, .9, now this is just some random statistic, but 99.9% .9 of the time, random statistic, you're gonna find that product on Amazon or eBay because all that stuff comes from China. It all comes from the same place. It all comes from the, the same factories, uh, you know, in Guangzhou and, and Shenzhen and, and, you know, the same places. In all the same stuff comes from the same places. That's why you see a million vendors selling the, the same thing all over the place because, you know, one factory or two factories are producing this stuff. They're, they're, they're distributing it out to a few different distributors who are then distributing it to stores and sellers. And, and uh, you know, eventually, and, and what we like to do is go back as close as we can to the factory uh, and get it directly to the factory. But keep in mind that there's, probably you know dozens and dozens and dozens of of distributors in china that are selling the same product which each one of those distributors could have you know maybe a thousand retailers or something like that. i mean it could be like there's insane amounts of you know that's why you could find a product i don't know if you guys have ever done this before i don't know if you guys have ever been walking through like costco right and Costco might have this exact same speaker. You might be able to find this exact same. This, this is something that's the perfect example of something you might go find in Costco, right? For $27 or $29 or $39 or something like that, right? The only difference is it's going to have some different name on it. And it's going to be packaged in a nice box. And some person that just happened to get a contract with Costco to get these lights in there, you know, just some random marketer like me or some, somebody like you that, that is able to get their products into the right place at the right time. Um, you know, there was a... a um, the story about Bed Bath & Beyond recently about them having some some lamps that were being manufactured in China. And these things were all over the Internet, being sold everywhere from every seller. And, and Bed Bath & Beyond was um, the one that was getting a bad rap for them because the sellers um, or because they started catching on fire. Some, there was creating fires or something like that. But the, the fact it was is that everybody had these exact same ones. They just all had different name brands. They just put a different name on it. Right. And so my point is, is that these products that you're going to find on Alibaba, AliExpress or whatever, uh, eBay, they're all on the same sites. They're on Amazon. They're on eBay. They're on, um, you know, a bunch of other sites, too. So you don't just have to be restricted to these sites or limited to these sites, Amazon and eBay and, and AliExpress, which are the ones that I use for my research. You could do it on any website. Just search that product and find out what you can about it. But we're on Amazon. So what, what I do on Amazon is I look at the question and answer section. He says, I just received my speaker, but it doesn't say waterproof anywhere. Is it truly waterproof? Good to know, right? Like if it doesn't, if you get something, if you bought something that said waterproof online and then you get it and it doesn't say waterproof, I, I'd be skeptical about putting it in the water. I understand, I understand that concern, right? It doesn't say it on the box. I want to make sure I don't ruin it, right? And so uh, this person answers, says, I never had my speakers nearly near splashing water, but this might help. And then they gave a link. We don't care. Uh, see another answer. Hi, thanks so much for your for your question. It is waterproof. So the actual seller came back and responded to him. It is waterproof, and the waterproof rate is IXP65. If you have more comments or concerns, p please feel free to email. So um, you know you can find out um, a lot of information about like rate, tech t um, spec information about the ratings. Now, from what I understand, you can't legally say waterproof in the United States with, with certain items. I don't, I don't know what type of items. That's something you're going to want to look up. Um, but from what my understanding, at, at least for watches, that I, the, the, one of the industries that I sold in, um, you couldn't say waterproof. You have to say the, the, the rating, um, which, which really means up to, like, it's, it's water resistant up to so many hours or something like that. I, I forget. Um, so, so that's something you're going to want to, want to be aware of. But... Um, Regardless, here's th this is what we learn about it. He answered, or this guy asked, asked the question, does it, um, does it, is it waterproof? The box doesn't say it. I, I thought I bought a, a waterproof device, but it doesn't say. The vendor says, yes, it is. You're going to have that same problems probably from your customers. If you're selling this and the box doesn't say, it doesn't say waterproof anywhere, but you're selling it as waterproof, you're going to have customers going to question you. And you could say, you could have some confidence saying, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's waterproof. Don't worry about it. It's just not on the packaging, but, but you're safe, right? And then just give them that rating or whatever. 
right? So that's in line with dangers and problems. I'm not going to continue to keep writing stuff down right here. I just wanted to get some to give you guys an example of what to find. Uh, but that's in line with dangers, problems, and restrictions is, you know, we don't want them using it in, in near water if it's not waterproof, right? So um, somebody asked, how would, I, how would I sell a Bluetooth speaker? How would I target it? Well, luckily there's an option for uh, Bluetooth right inside of Facebook for targeting. So you can try there, start with that one. Um, I'm not gonna say it's gonna work, but that's where I would start. It did work for me when I crossed it with other niches. So um, you're just gonna have to figure that out. Uh, is this compatible with, with any iPhones? This person says, I would say yes, it is wireless or has a cord attachment to USB. Other answers is yes, we have iPhones, it works great. I have a Samsung, but your phone has Bluetooth capabilities, it will work. So yeah, works with iPhone, Any, anything with Bluetooth, just say yes. Uh, how do we connect to see about a warranty? Mine, got, mine quit chart, okay, so this person had a problem, let's not worry about that. Um, is it actually waterproof, didn't say. Uh, I would say so, I've used it many times in the rain and dropped it in the sink and haven't had any problems. Okay, so you, good, you could be confident. This is an actual waterproof speaker. Yep, had same concern. So, so you know, people people might ask you. I mean, that's a legit. That's legit right there. That's like real. That's that's reality. You're selling this. You start selling this, and you're happy. You're getting these sales, and all of a sudden, you get customers that are saying, "Hey, it says you said this is waterproof, but I don't see it on the packaging." Imagine how stressful that could be to you. You sold a hundred of them, you know, advertising it as waterproof to people that go to the beach, and now you're finding out that it doesn't say waterproof, and people are questioning you, and you don't know because you've never touched this product before, right? That that could be really that could be really really. Uh, uh, stressful. It, it has been to me, those types of situations. And so by doing this type of research, you're aware of this, then you could answer it right away. So, um, you know, we spent 40 minutes, 50 minutes on this one product. Um, that's how I like to do things. I like to just take one thing and really, really break it down as much as we possibly can. Now, I do want to go over a few others because we could get a few more examples. Um, but that's honestly like the meat of it. That's really, really the meat of it of how to do this product research. I mean, we've learned everything we possibly can. This is like getting it home in my house and, and playing with it myself, right? I mean, I can't really get any better than that. Look at these reviews, we got more pictures. Um, now I know how big it is in comparison to a water bottle or wherever that picture was at. Um, you know, we have a uh, perfect gift for my 11 year old son, he loves it, great speaker overall. Uh, totally impressed by the quality of the product for the price, the sound is really good. A decent amount of ba bass. Um, let's see what this problem was. Don't like to leave bad reviews, but I don't want people to get the same trouble as me. First bought the speaker, pretty cool lights and loud. A month later, it stopped working. Customer service contacted me, helped me, sending me a new one. Uh, went out, it's about two months, and the speaker went out again. So um, this person bought one twice, it went out twice. Um, you know, hopefully that's not a big problem among people. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't seem like it. They got a good, lot of good reviews, but it does seem to be a, an issue that's coming up. You know, stopped working after a few days. Uh, two stars for the lights of the price, missing three stars for poor sound quality. That guy don't know what he's talking about. They like it, um, right? So you just ignore it. If everybody's saying there's high, really good sound quality and then you got somebody that says bad quality, then I just I just don't even pay attention to that one, right? But when you get a bunch, bunch of people that are saying that they're, that they're having, there's, um, you know, there's went out or whatever that they were saying, you know, it stops working after a month, you want to start paying attention to that. Now, if there's like, you know, like we've seen on... Um, on the AliExpress one, this one, we have 1,200 five-star reviews and then a few others that were just garbage reviews. Like if these, if, if the, even though all 140 or whatever these are, 145 or whatever it is, you know, if all of them were because they, got, they were broken, like, or they, they started going out within a month, with that amount of five stars, I really wouldn't be a concern. I would just deal with the, the broken ones as they come in. I'll just replace them for them. You know, offer a three month uh, three month warranty, six month warranty, or something. Just replace it with them. A lot of times, the vendors will even have that warranty, so you have it sent back to you, and you send it back to the vendor, or whatever. Yep, yep, Derek. You don't have to get sample products now. I recommend getting products if you can. Um, you know, we have our warehouse full of returns or products all the time. So, um, you know, if you can, great. But you don't have to, and that's that. That is really what we're trying to stress here: is that you don't have to. Um, you don't you don't have to do that, you know. You could sell products that like that's one of the biggest questions I get asked. That's one of the biggest fears in in drop shipping in the entire drop shipping business, the whole entire, entire drop shipping world. You know, I, I've been in this for for several years now, and the biggest concern I have I, I hear from people getting started is is how do I sell products that I have never touched? Like how, like the, it's a fear. Like I understand that fear. Why you, you're going to be caught in a situation where you're selling garbage products? Well, no, that's not 
the reality of it if you're doing the proper research, right? So um, let's go ahead and find another product. Let's go, um, you guys didn't give me ideas. I told you guys, any tips for good t-shirts with high demand to sell? No, I don't have any good tips on that right now. Um, would you target, who would you target if selling iPhone cases? This is not about targeting. I'm looking for questions, any, anything concerning uh, this topic or if there's any type of product that you guys want me to research. Let me, let me just, um, let's see, anything on this front that, that looks cool. Oh, I said I'd do women's clothing. Um, let's just grab something random. Okay, so um, we want something that's selling a lot. Let's get back out of here. This isn't going to work. So clothing, men's clothing, women's clothing. Actually, men's clothing is better. We'll do men's clothing. And then we'll pick um, maybe some shorts, right? And then let's search by most orders. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yeah, somebody said women's clothing. We'll come back to women's clothing in a minute. Um, let's check out. Let's just look at some some of these shorts. Open up a few of them and see if we can learn about anything. See if we can find some helpful information. You know, because I mean, these ones. Well, other than the Superman, you don't want to sell these because Superman. But you know, you would just like go after guys. I guess would be my targeting, right? I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna go after guys that like wearing shorts. You know, maybe something like Old Navy, right? Or some some sort of uh, Old Navy brand or Aeropostale, something something like that, where where they wear this this style of pants or shorts. I mean, um, that might be my my logical targeting. Right, but doing research, I might learn that that might not be my targeting at all, or maybe it will be my targeting. But now I have some—I'm armed with some some additional information. So I'm going to do the exact same thing as as I showed you a minute ago, and um, come to my reviews, and you know I could start reading the ones that are in other languages. Well, they're actually translated, but like they're typically hard to read even in translation. Um, so I like to look at the United States. And the other thing is, is I like to look at the United States because I like to find a ratio of how many people are in the United States wearing these, right? So right here I got five pages and there's what, 10 on page or something like that, 15 on page um, of people in the United States. So, you know, let me uncheck that and then see how many pages there's 110 pages. So, you know, there's a small portion of people in the United States, but I still think that that's a, that's a decent amount, right? However many that is, um, five pages times so was that 100, 100 people out of 1,600 somewhere around there in the United States? So that's a decent amount. So that tell, what that tells me is is that this isn't a product that's only selling in Brazil, right? So a lot of times when you when you uh, come and find a product on AliExpress and you're like trying to sell it and you're like, oh man, there's tons and tons of numbers, you know, it's selling really really well, and then you try to sell it and then it, you can't sell it to the United States or whatever, um, to to uh, um, at least. Um, well, to the United States, you can't. You try to sell to the United States, and you can't get sales, and, and you kind of wonder why. Well, it's mostly because it was people in, like, say, Brazil or in in uh, China or in, in some other country that's buying it. So, um, you know, it's all about uh, the culture a lot of times. And so, you know, when I click this reviews from the United States, I'm also not just pay not just looking for the information on the reviews from the United States, but I'm looking at a ratio of how many people are buying this from the United States versus, you know, the overall sales. So, um, like I said, this one's got, oh, it says, um, I don't know if it actually gives us a number, but five pages and there's like 15 on a page. So we'll just say like 75 to 100, somewhere around there, uh, which is a decent number for that amount. So now let's look at what we can learn from this. Too narrow cut, size 40 corresponds with width, width of waist, but skinny at the bottom of the shorts. The quality is excellent shorts. The seller reacted with understanding and returned the money. So it's not that they're too small, it's just that they go down too narrow, it sounds like. The, the, waist, the waist fits good, but that the, the um, shorts went down narrow. And that, you know, he didn't like that, that this person didn't like that. So let's see, um, we got some pictures here. I don't really care about the pictures, um, if they don't give us information, especially if it's blurry. The shorts were a little too short, and I had to order the same size, bef I had to order the same size before they fit. 
I don't know what you mean by that. So you just kept ordering the same size and they finally fit? That doesn't make sense, whatever. We'll try to stretch them when I go to the laundry, okay? So um, yeah, so this right away, you, you know, now you say, imagine you wanted to sell these, right? Now, this is why you've been warned against clothing and things like that um, is because of the sizing, but the quality is there. I mean, the, this person said up here, um, the quality is excellent. It's just it didn't fit, right? And so um, the, the quality is really there, but you just gotta pay attention to the sizing or sometimes the quality isn't there. And so you wanna check that. Sometimes they'll take stock images, right, of, mm -hmm of one of the factories that's making them, but they're getting it from a different factory. And sometimes it might be like, um, you know, a, six, a, a thousand, a thousand D nylon and, 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 you know, that's what's on the picture and it looks high quality, but then you get it or they sell it and it's like a 400 D, right? You're getting it from a different factory, right? So, um, you know, you're going to find that and uh, at times and typically it's not the case. Typically you won't be getting, getting, get it gotten over on like that. But um, especially if you read the reviews, you'll be able to find out like things like, oh, this was a knockoff, get the better quality ones or something like that. In this case, the person said it's excellent, excellent uh, quality, it just doesn't fit. So these don't fit, shorts fit well, look perfect, only material seems to be too thin. So now this is the exact opposite. This person says that the material seems too thin, but they fit. So I, I really don't get that one. Um, you can pay attention to sizes, maybe sizes are different. Um, this guy ordered a size 40 and had had um, they were too small. This guy ordered a size 40 and it fits perfect. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that one. Um, this one said perfect, received within a week, consists consistent of the with the order. The quality is good, though the fabric thinner than expected. So now we know the fa fabric probably is thinner than expected, right? Came without belt, cheating. So maybe it looks like there's supposed to be a belt included, but it doesn't say anywhere that there's no that there's a belt included. So that's another thing that you did. Like I would I would not sell these at this point. I would not sell these. Like if I was thinking about selling these ones, like I would stop instantly. I'd be like, okay, that that you know the sizing's messed up. Uh, some some people are saying they're too thin. Multiple people are saying they're too thin. Now they don't even come with a belt. Like no, I'm cool. I'll, I'll leave it alone. I'm not selling it. Now there are some people that are happy with them. So you know maybe you'll get some good results for it. You know there are people a lot that are saying perfect, perfect, perfect. You know, a lot of people are saying that. Um, so maybe you'll get some good results. I I'm not sure. Um, but the fact that there were so many bad results and that there's so many variants, you know, a possibility of, you know, all these sizes and all these colors, I'd probably just start thinking about leaving this product alone. Right. It's just, you know, I don't want to sell something that if I'm going to get people that are going to complaining about the quality or complaining about the size, that's just a customer service headache waiting to happen. Right. So um, yeah, you can say customer serv customers need to pay attention to the sizing chart and you will have that sizing chart there. Um, but saying one thing and, and having it happen is a, is, are two different things. Now you, could, now you could tell your customers, well, sorry, you should have paid attention to the sizing chart, but I guarantee you 100% your business isn't gonna last long if you do that. So you have to be accommodating to your customers. So you have to say things like, you know, oh, we're sorry, we did have the sizing chart there. You must have missed it uh, when you ordered. We'll do this for you this one time. We'll re just we'll, we're going to send you out a new pair. Just you know, we'll put in a shipping label. Just re return the old pair, uh, you know, back to us, right? Something like that. What that does is it gets them happy. Now that they got a, like they're now they're extremely happy customer because you're you're you know fixing it for them, versus being a pissed off customer because you said well you should have looked at the sizing chart. Right, you don't want to say that. You, you never want to. You never want to talk to your customers that way, right? Um, it, it's one thing to point out that they should have, like, um, you know, oh, you must have missed the sizing chart. Um, unfortunately, that does happen at times. Um, you know, have a look now and let me know what size we should send you. Something like that, right? Point it out to them, but do it in a way that's kind and um, you know, help them out. That's that's what running a business is about. It's about you know, is uh, doing your part in the world to to. Uh, put stuff out there. Yes, we benefit from that, but you know, we're just, we're just completing this system, this world system. And so you don't want to do it in a, in a, um, in a mean way, a mean spirited way. So, and I don't think that's what you meant when you, when you mentioned the sizing chart, I'm just saying that, that, um, it's a, it's, it goes beyond that. It's not just a size. You just have to be aware of your customers. So, um, yeah, those ones I wouldn't sell. Um, I opened up a few of these, so let's see if we can learn any more about these ones. Um, shorts, uh, let's see, reviews, 950 reviews. Reviews from the United States. Product size tops top predict a small, huh? Did I, did, was this translated? Oh, yeah, that, okay. He's, he's from the United States, but he still needed to translate it. 
I'll, I'll let him slide on that one. Um, here, I'm going to let you guys know a tip. Here's a secret tip. It has nothing to do with this training. Absolutely nothing to do with this training. Actually, it can have something to do with this training. Um, but, it, but it's a side tip about, doing, about your Facebook ads right now. So side tip. What I just realized right now, and I've known this for a while, but I'm just, I, it, I want to tell you right now because I've just seen this, is that this person's in the United States, but is speaking probably like French or something. I don't know what that is. This person in the United States is speaking like Russian or, or uh, something else. I don't know what that is. United States English, United States, um, you know, Russian, Ukrainian, something, I don't know, right? United States and uh, this, right? Now, different possibilities of what could be happening. One, the person could be ordering from the United States and sending it to somebody somewhere else. There's a lot of different things that can be happening, but I, I don't want to speculate on any of those. What, what I'm going to really speculate is that, uh, what I'm comfortable speculating because I see this over and over and over again, is that uh, what I find for these cheaper products, cheap knockoff China type products. I'm finding, and again, this is a secret tip that I've, I've never actually told anybody this. I mean, nobody even that I work with has have I told this. Um, if you are gonna target English, if you target English as a second language uh, audiences, you're gonna, in the United States, you're gonna get cheaper clicks and you're, and you're gonna get um, a higher chance of conversions for cheap type products, right? So if somebody, if it, like me, I would never buy clothes off of AliExpress. Just straight up, I wouldn't buy clothes off of AliExpress to wear. I just want to do it. If I went to China, I, when I went to China, I bought clothes and I wore them there in China. I got them home. They, they just sat there. I don't know what I did with them. Throw, put, put them in a bag or something like that. You know, I don't mind. But I wouldn't buy clothes off like this type. Of, I wouldn't buy it, right? Just, it's not me. So, um, you know, with that said, there's a lot of people that will. And the type of people that will are the ones that are wearing this type of stuff in, in their, um, you know, in the countries where they're from. So, you, you know, it's on all, or on, yeah, on all express, you get a lot of people that are buying from, from Russia. You get a lot of people that are buying from uh, Brazil, Spain, Mexico. You're getting a lot of, uh, you know, countries where they don't have a lot of money. They're, they're buying this type of stuff. So my secret tip for you guys is a very, very sidetrack tip. But I, I did kind of just see it right now in that page, wherever it went, um, is that, uh, oh, down here, is that, um, if you're gonna, it, it, one thing to try in your campaigns is to target people that have English as a second language. They'll be more susceptible of buying the cheap China stuff. I was selling like a, a good example of this. I was, I was selling a, a knockoff of the uh, G-Shock watch. It kind of looks like a G-Shock, but it's called the S-Shock, right? I sold those for a little bit of them. And um, you know, the biggest, buy, I, I noticed that most of my buyers, you know, at like 80 out of 100 buyers had a, a, a name that was, um, you know, from, from one of these countries that you typically see buying on AliExpress, right? There's a lot of, a lot of Russian names, a lot of, um, well, mostly Russian, honestly, um, for, for that particular watch. So, um, you know, that's where I really kind of discovered that. And now I see it here and I, I've seen it over and over since. So kind of, kind of side, uh, side tip, because it has to do with your targeting, but it's right in line with what we're talking about is that you can actually discover that here in this research process, right? Why are all these comments, why are these English speak, English speaking people or in, why are all these people in English speaking countries not speaking English, right? I would quite, I would like, well, maybe there's something there. Maybe that's who I need to be targeting, right? So, um, you know, just a side tip. I'm gonna close that one out. Let's look at some more products, some more shorts, I guess. And yeah, let's close out the shorts. Somebody said women's clothing. Let's look at women's clothing. Oops. Um, women's clothing. Um, Let's look at uh, cocktail dresses. Um, you know, I don't remember the exact targeting for ESL population on Facebook, but there's there's a lot of language um, language options uh, there. Uh, there's several of them that will allow you to do it, um, or several ways that will allow you to do it. Um, let's see, dresses, orders. Maybe I'll do another another one here, uh, another one of these lives, probably in a few weeks, um, on on targeting. Go really in depth on targeting and just discovering audiences that you don't even know exist. Uh, let's see. This one was sold a lot, so let's find out all about it. Look at the feedback, and um, you, know, you can look at reviews from the United States. Very good, fast shipping, fast delivery, less than two weeks. My favorite dress store. This is my number four dress purchased from from Ever Pretty, which is must be this store up here. Yeah, Ever Pretty. So she's purchased four four dresses from them, and 
uh, thank you. So she's liked it. Uh, she's going to keep coming back. So, you know, I would want that. If I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to be selling a product, I would, I, I would love, if I'm, if I'm going to be having a product sent from an AliExpress vendor, having them say that they would purchase that product four times, or that they purchased from that same vendor four times, you know, I'm happy with that because that means that they could purchase from me four times because I'm going to be selling that product, right? Does that make sense? So um, that makes me happy. You know, if, if I'm selling this dress, that makes me happy that, that she's happy and she purchased four times. That means I could count on this vendor. Beautiful dress, fast delivery, my favorite dress vendor, best quality and excellent service. Awesome to know. Um, very pretty dress. Good stuff, right? You guys agree that's good, that like I'd be comfortable selling that. Like they haven't had any problems with it, right? If they're, they're not having any problems with it, then you shouldn't either. Let's look at pictures. So pictures, um, you get some quality pictures of it in the packaging, you get it hanging up, what it looks like. Um, you get people wearing the pictures. Again, you wanna be careful of these ones because of, uh, you know, you don't wanna get pic pictures of the people in it. Um, but it does give you a good idea of how it fits. And you can take some of these pictures and, um, well, um, I I've been, I've been guilty of taking some of these pictures and kind of cropping them and making a, a collage and using them for a short period of time. So, um, you know, you, you know, um, I'll just shut up. You, you guys, you guys, uh, you guys know what I'm saying. So yeah, let's just like, you could learn, you know, you can learn all about that dress. She, she looks happy. It looks like it fits her well. You know, you could see all about it, get some good ideas of, of, um, you know, how it fits on people and, uh, you know, the type of person you should be going after. Um, I didn't notice it in the description and you wouldn't notice it by this picture, but you would definitely notice it by these pictures. Um, well, not definitely, but you, you can notice it by these pictures is that these are for, I noticed it because a lot of products that are on China are made for um, really, uh, really thin girls, for thin Chinese girls. And so um, when you see products like this, that they're not, so I'm not saying she's big or anything like that. I'm just saying that she's not as big as a lot of the thinner Chinese girls. Then, you know, it made me wonder, is this for like plus size? And it actually does say it up here, plus size. So, um, you know, I wouldn't have noticed that from the initial looking at it. I got that from the reviews. So, um, you know, that's, that's good to know, right? These actually look like some like good pictures, like modeling type pictures. Um, so anyways. Learned about that, you know, this one, they, they, this is a good vendor. So now, now I have, now let's say this is my product. Now I'm, I'm selling dresses. This is like, I'm selling this. They're happy with it. I'm happy with it. We're making some money. You know what I'm going to do now, guys? Because they're saying that, you know, two people on the, two people have given reviews out of just a few I've read. Two people have given reviews. Um, two people have given their reviews saying that they would buy from this store again, or they bought from this store multiple times, actually. So if I'm in the breast knit or, dress niche. Uh, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Um, if I'm in the dress niche, I am going to click on the store and look at the, uh, the store that, you know, it's all about dresses. It's all about the product that I'm in. It's all about the, the uh, niche that I'm in. And I'm just going to find out, you know, what's their best sellers? What is it that's uh, hot about this store? What, is it, what do people like about this store that's gonna keep them coming back um, four times? It wasn't just the dress that they seen or that I just seen. Um, uh, it's, you know, it has more to do with, you know, the, the branding, it has to do with the quality, it has to do with a lot. One thing about AliExpress to know, guys, because now we're talking about the source, oops, now we're talking about the stores, is is that uh, AliExpress, have, they have to have brands on these stores. Now they have to actually, they can't just sell random products on here. So when you go to a store on AliExpress, they're kind of building up a brand around it. And so when you see people are coming back, saying they're gonna come back, um, yeah, you guys, that was a tongue, t tongue twist. You guys are giving me a lot of smile, laughs on that one. That was kind of, that, it came out not what I meant to say. Um, so yeah, it's funny, haha. Um, makes, makes a good webinar. Um, but you know, the important thing is, is that uh, you guys are catching what, what we're talking about here. Um, you know, learn about the store, learn about the brands, learn all you can about the products that you're selling so that you could enhance your, your products, right? So there's so many stores, I mean, so many products on here. This one right here, this, this, is a, uh, this picture right here is very, very catchy. This would stand out in a newsfeed. This would stand out on your, your slider. Um, 
you know, for, for your store, if you have a dress store, you know, same thing with this picture. Now, I'm not going to say take these, but what I, if you're building a relationship with this store, uh, you could ask them. They'll, I, I've never been told by an AliExpress vendor if I could take a picture from their site, ever. And I've asked them. I've, I've, I've asked plenty of times. All right. So um, that's different than coming over here to um, coming over here to to the feedback and, and taking, you know, the, the review pictures. Uh, it, it's different from from taking those, right? It's com it's completely different. These are users uploading to AliExpress. This is the store uploading it, making these images, and they want you to sell. They because they want to sell products, right? So stuff like this, I, I would ask this vendor, be like, hey, can I use your your uh, can I use the image on the front of your store? Uh, you know, I'm trying to build a dress store, and I'm, I want to sell this dress. Can I use it? Uh, I'll buy them from you. I promise, I'll buy them from you. And they'll say yes, right? So um, you know, that's what I learned from from this particular product. If that was the one we we're on. Yeah, where they said that they would buy over, they they bought from this store over and over and over. Um, you know, what I learned from them is, is, well, I need to pay attention to this store. You know, why are they buying from them? I want to be like them, right? I want, I want, I want uh, what they have, right? So, you know, all this stuff it goes way beyond just learning. You know, the specs of your product, right? We didn't really learn about price point. We didn't talk about that a little bit, but you, you could, you know, you could learn about price points by by uh, researching your product, researching your products elsewhere. Um, but we learned, we've seen some different uses of different products. You know, we take that, the, the waterproof speaker to the beach. You know, we've seen some likes and dislikes. We've seen some pros and cons of products. Targeting, we talked about how we could learn some different targeting angles from, from products, uh, restrictions, dangers, and, and other problems. Uh, we, we learned all of that. We learned, we learned so much from, from this, right? I mean, would you guys agree? Would you guys agree that, that you've learned so much from, from, uh, from this, this simple, a webinar of just looking at, I mean, just the speaker. If we just stayed on the speaker, you know, without looking at the the dresses and and the um, and the shorts and the other stuff, uh, without looking at all, all that, like it, it's like I, in my my head, if I was sitting there, I'd be blown away, right? And if you guys, if if you if you haven't learned from this, then you guys just watch this video again, okay? Because everybody, you guys, you guys are like, there's nobody that's saying this is stupid. No, no, you guys are saying that you didn't learn. So so like that's, you know, I, I don't want to go there to assume that you don't because obviously it's it's good value. Right, and so you guys just take it. That's the important thing: is that you take this and you actually do it. We could do these videos, you know, all 90 days. There's obviously going to be 90 days of content. We're on day 41. Uh, so much videos from so many different people, and and we could do this stuff all day long. And if you guys don't watch it and if you don't apply it, well, you're obviously watching it. There's been over uh, 90 people on this webinar, maybe over 100, uh, way over 100, uh, um, you know, all together. You, know, you guys are watching this, but are you guys doing it? Right? Are you guys actually doing this research? Are you are you actually applying this stuff? Now, we know you are, but I'm challenging you guys that don't. I'm, I'm challenging you that are that are uh, you know those of you that are just watching these videos and that are skeptical, right? Because that's the big problem that I have, or, or the big issue that I, I have coming to, or that I see from you from you guys uh, in this store, or just anybody getting uh, or in this group or anybody just getting started is that you don't want to get started because you can't touch the products, you don't know about the products, you don't know what you're selling, you don't know about the quality. Right, so I just solved that problem for you. You should never have that problem again. You should never question uh, anything about a product again. You should automatically know what to do, automatically know how to handle it, right? And that's really what I want to stress is that you know you guys have the answers now. You have the answers. You know how to do it. Uh, this is what I've done. This is what others do, um, and, and this is what works. Sound good? You guys like that? Good stuff. Thank you guys for keeping it entertaining for me, and. Uh, running with my, my tongue twister. Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything else. Good nuggets, good, glad. I'm not gonna answer the specific questions about products, um, but about learning about products, I will. Awesome. Cool, doesn't look like there's any more questions, so uh, without further ado, I think I'm gonna close this one up. Uh, tomorrow, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm still scheduled to do it tomorrow as well. So we'll be talking about uh, as long as as long as it's still on track. Um, I think we're going to be talking about reporting and stuff. You guys all have have been testing products and and been running some ads. I think for a while, at least the majority have. And so uh, tomorrow, I, I want to take a look at the reporting section of your ads to kind of figure out uh, what what, are, what the hell it is you're supposed to be looking at, right? What do all these numbers mean? So um, talk to you guys then. Take care.